Despite the fact that a prominent government sub-agency underneath the Department of Homeland Security labeled the 2020 election as the most secure election in American history, well, a new study has just been published, which found that the massive expansion of mail-in voting, as well as the resultant fraud, almost certainly changed the outcome of the 2020 presidential race. Specifically, this was a study commissioned by the Heartland Institute titled this, quote, who really won the 2020 election? measuring the effect of mail-in ballot fraud in the Trump-Biden race for the White House. And before we dive into the results of the actual analysis, I first have to give you a bit of background on this particular study. You see, about two months ago, back in December, the Heartland Institute, alongside Rasmussen, they conducted a large poll of American voters, asking them about the 2020 election. And that poll, it found that one in five people who voted by mail committed some type of voter fraud. Specifically, in that poll, they asked respondents if they voted by mail. And if they happened to answer yes, then there was a series of other questions that they were asked related to mail-in voting. And here were some of the top-line results. Quote, 17% of mail-in voters admitted that in 2020, they voted in a state where they were no longer a permanent resident. 21% of them admitted that they filled out a ballot for a friend or a family member. 17% of them said that they signed a ballot for a friend or family member with or without his or her permission. And then there were two other questions that were asked of all the voters, not just the people who voted by mail, but rather all the voters being surveyed. And one of the questions was about their friends, family, and acquaintances. And that question, it revealed that aside from themselves, 10% of all the respondents claimed that they, quote, knew a friend, family member, coworker, or other acquaintance who has admitted that he or she cast a mail-in ballot in 2020 in a state other than his or her state of permanent residence. Furthermore, the second question, it revealed that 8% of all the voters said that they were offered some type of a payment or some kind of a reward for voting in the 2020 election. And so with this survey as the foundation, the Heartland Institute conducted a deep dive analysis looking to see exactly what happens when you combine the results of the survey showing roughly one in five people admitting to some type of fraud with the fact that in the year 2020, about 43% of all ballots were mailed in. And apparently what you get, according to the Heartland Institute, is an election whose results were almost certainly altered. Quote, after the researchers carried out additional analyses of the data, they concluded that mail-in ballot fraud significantly impacted the 2020 presidential election. They also found that, absent the huge expansion of mail-in ballots during the pandemic, which was often done without legislative approval, President Trump would most likely have won. In short, here was the top-line finding that the researchers wrote in this study. Quote, Had the 2020 election been conducted like every national election has been over the past two centuries, wherein the vast majority of voters cast ballots in person rather than by mail, Donald Trump would have almost certainly been re-elected. Now, as we discussed just a moment ago, the survey that initially launched the study, it found that one in five voters committed some type of mail-in fraud. However, after diving a bit deeper into the actual data, the researchers found that the number could be significantly higher. Quote, after analyzing the raw survey data, we were able to conclude that 28.2% of respondents who voted by mail admitted to committing at least one kind of voter fraud. This means that more than one in four ballots cast by mail in 2020 were likely cast fraudulently and thus should not have been counted. And the reason that they can say that these ballots were likely to have been cast fraudulently is because what these people were admitting to in that survey is illegal in almost all circumstances across all 50 states. For instance, when discussing the idea that 21% of respondents claim to have filled out a ballot for another person, well, here's what one of those researchers told us here at the Epic Times in a phone interview after the study came out. Quote, there are narrow exceptions where a survey behavior may be legal, like filling out a mail-in ballot on behalf of another voter if that person is blind, illiterate, or disabled and requests assistance. However, such cases were within the margin of error and not statistically significant. And so the next logical question that they were asking in the study was, what were the implications? What would it mean if upwards of a quarter of the mail-in ballots were indeed fraudulent? And what they did to answer that question was to look at the six swing states that President Trump officially lost in the year 2020. Just for your reference, those states were as follows. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And then taking into consideration the fact that mail-in voters overwhelmingly favored Joe Biden, these researchers, they ran several different scenarios based on the data which came out of the survey. 
Quote, they then calculated the electoral results in the six states under the different scenarios, each with a lowered assumed percentage of fraudulent ballots ranging from 28.2% all the way down to 1%. For each of the 29 scenarios that they assessed, the researchers calculated the estimated number of fraudulent ballots, which were then subtracted from the overall 2020 vote totals to generate a new estimate for vote totals. Overall, of the 29 different scenarios presented in the study, the researchers concluded that President Trump would have won the 2020 election in all but three. Specifically, they calculated that the only scenarios that would affirm the official 2020 election result, namely that candidate Biden won, were mail-in ballot fraud levels between 1 and 3 percent of ballots cast. Mail-in ballot fraud rates higher than 3 percent would, according to the study, mean more fraudulent Biden votes that should be subtracted from the total, putting President Trump ahead. And so, the study then broke down their analyses by percentage point spreads, showing what would happen at different tiers of ballot fraud. Take a look. If mail-in ballot fraud levels were between 1 and 2%, then none of the results would change, and Joe Biden would still pull out a victory. If fraud levels were exactly 3%, then the states of Arizona and Georgia would flip to Trump, but Joe Biden would still win in that scenario. However, this all changes when you get above 3%. If the mail-in fraud levels were between 4 and 5%, then Trump wins enough of the swing states to actually force a tie at the Electoral College, which would then subsequently force a vote of state delegations in the House of Representatives. And at that time, the Republicans control the majority of state delegations and would therefore have likely Trump winning. But then, once you get to 6% and above in terms of mail-in ballot fraud, then there is no more matter of state delegations. In all those scenarios, Trump wins at the Electoral College. And don't forget, the survey analysis that this was based on had about 20 to 28% of the respondents admitting to subtype of ballot fraud, well above that 6% threshold. Although, just to give you both sides of the argument here, there are some critics of that survey, and specifically the way the questions were framed. For instance, we here at the Epic Times, we discussed the survey with Mr. Jim Womack. He's the president of the North Carolina Election Integrity Team. And after reviewing the survey, as well as the new study that was based on the survey, Mr. Womack came back to us and he told us that the questions had some flaws. Quote, we know that there was fraud in the 2020 election, but you can't conclude that it was 20% or 10% or even 5% based on the survey because the questions that could lead to such conclusions were unclear. His main critique of the questions in this particular survey was that they basically commingled legal and illegal activity into one question, making it difficult to determine what the true percentage of ballot fraud really was. For instance, 17% of respondents said that they cast a ballot in a state where they were no longer a permanent resident. However, Mr. Womack may mentioned, he made the point that the Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act, well, it allows people who live overseas to still cast a ballot in America. And so what that would mean is that 17% of the people saying that they voted in a state where they no longer live isn't equivalent to 17% admitting to voter fraud. Another example that Mr. Womack gave is that in all 50 states, it's permissible for blind, disabled, and or illiterate people to request help in filling out a ballot. And so 21% of the people responding yes to that particular question also does not necessarily mean that 21% of the people actually admitted to voter fraud. His whole criticism is that you would need to delve deeper into these particular questions to get to the truth. Now, we here at the Epic Times, we were actually able to present these criticisms back to the Heartland Institute, specifically the researchers behind that study, and they got back to us saying that they essentially stand by their findings. For instance, quote, Mr. McFerrin, one of the researchers, he acknowledged that it's legal for people who are blind, disabled, or illiterate to get help from someone in filling out a ballot. However, he argued that the number of such individuals responding to the Heartland Rasmussen survey would likely have been tiny. It would be difficult to imagine that dozens of blind people or those that are illiterate or disabled are answering this poll. The presumably tiny fraction of survey respondents who fall into this category would be statistically insignificant and not impact the overall survey results. But even if that particular question is left out due to concerns about its clarity, the percentage of people who admitted to potentially fraudulent voter activity would still be about one in five. Mr. McFerrin said he and his team have received and reviewed Mr. Womack's criticism, and they believe the points he makes have some validity, but not enough to affect their findings in a meaningful way. He maintains the study clearly shows that if the 2020 election had been as fair and secure as prior elections, President Trump would almost certainly have been reelected to a second term. And so there you have it. If you'd like to read the entirety of this new study for yourself, which came out of the Heartland Institute, and for your reference, it's pretty thick. It's about 115 pages long. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, I'll throw the link to the PDF version of it. It'll be down in the description box below this video if you're the type of person that likes to dig into the weeds. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free. Uh -huh.